A very warm welcome everyone. A recent study published by the UK's Newcastle University states that more than 30 lakh people in India alone are vulnerable to flooding cause of the melting glaciers. Why? Because the Himalayan region and the Tibetan region together account for the third pole of the world. Why? They have more than 30,000 glaciers. And because of global warming, all of them are slowly melting. Now, in this video, I shall be discussing this concept and I shall be discussing a few other spillover effects of these melting glaciers. So, what are glaciers? Glaciers are nothing but moving rivers of ice. Just like a river, they have feeding tributary glaciers and the main glacier body. So, these can be as wide as a few kilometers. They can be a few hundred meters deep, right? Now, we need to understand one concept with respect to glaciers that they are huge masses that cause great erosion as they move. These black lines are nothing but the debris that is constantly being eroded from the adjoining mountains. And this debris, when it takes a particular shape, is known as a moraine. So, when a glacier, these two glaciers are moving alongside this piece of mountain, it is constantly eroding this mountain from its sides. And the debris that is being carried along with it are known as lateral moraines. When these two glaciers finally join, these two lateral moraines, the debris being carried along with it, are now being carried in a central line, which is known as the medial moraine. And along with this, the glacier is also eroding the base of the valley itself. Right? So, debris is being carried along with this glacier across all fronts, across all areas. Right? We need to understand this concept of a moraine in order to understand how glacial lakes are formed, right? So, I have a video for this. So, this is basically an aerial view of a glacier, a moving river of ice. Now, a glacier is simply moving downslope. That is why it is flowing. It is, it is a flowing river of ice. But the rate of melting of glacier exceeds the rate of descent. That is why the concept of a receding glacier has come into place. Because of global warming, the rate of melting of glaciers is higher than the rate of descent of a glacier downslope. Right. Now, these are huge chunks of ice, a few kilometers wide, a few hundred meters in depth. They all contain a lot of water. Now, when they melt, they start depositing this water. Right. Now, when the glacier starts to melt, the debris that it was carrying along with it starts to deposit. These were the lateral moraines and this is the terminal moraine. Basically, this is the debris that was underneath the glacier. As the ice starts to melt, this water starts to pile up between the borders of these moraines like this. So basically, lakes form towards the end of the glaciers, which are dammed by these moraines, lateral moraines, terminal moraines. What are moraines? Basically, the debris that is eroded by the glacier, which is simply carried along with it. Right? So, a receding glacier upon melting forms these moraine dam lakes. This study by the Newcastle University talks about the possible breach of these lakes which will result into flooding and almost 30 lakh people in India are vulnerable to direct flooding by such lakes. Now, we need to understand one more concept. This lake can be formed not just at the end of a glacier but towards the sides as well. For example, suppose this hillside receives fresh snowfall in winters. Snow will melt. It may deposit along the sides of the mountain itself. And in that case, it will be termed as a lateral dammed moraine. Sorry, lateral moraine dammed lake. Right? So, it can be a terminal moraine dammed lake or a lateral moraine dammed lake. Right? Now, 
This is the Lonar Glacier of Sikkim. It has been receding fast because of global warming and a terminal dammed moraine lake has been formed in this area, right? So this is a universal phenomena experienced along the entire Himalayan belt, right? And now we are aware about the concept of how glacial lakes are formed. Now, what do we need to understand? There are different trigger mechanisms that result in the breach of this lake. Let's understand. You all must be aware about the 2013 Kedarnath floods, which were often referred to as the Himalayan tsunami. Now, what happened in this case? Three forces hit this area at once. What were them? First, the advent of the southwest monsoons. They started creating a cloud in the Kedarnath Valley. It acts as a funnel. A cumulonimbus cloud formation started taking place. But that year, on 17th of June, a temperate cyclone was also visiting this area. Temperate cyclone meaning thereby a western disturbance. That added moisture to this cloud and the intensity of rainfall increased. Now, as you can see, the Kedarnath Valley is surrounded by snow-capped peaks, meaning thereby there were many glaciers and glacier dammed lakes, glacier lakes as well. So, what happened was, one of such lakes, a lateral moraine dammed lake in the Kedarnath region was breached due to this excessive rainfall and the third force that was provided in this Himalayan tsunami was by this Chorabari lake which got punctured due to excessive rainfall. So, the concept of glacial lake flooding is not a new one. It has been in news for quite some time and it is a normal phenomena and it keeps taking place. So, the first trigger mechanism that can cause the puncture of a glacial lake is excessive rainfall. Right? We'll discuss a few natural causes. Now, the second recent example is the Chamoli district disaster of 2021, 7th February 2021. What happened was a vertical rock avalanche took place. What is a vertical rock avalanche? Rock, 30 million cubic meters of rock fell vertically from a height of 1.7 kilometers. It blocked the valley of the Ranthi Gadhera river and the Rishi Ganga. Water started accumulating in these valleys. These were fed by glaciers. So, natural dams were created. And we are all aware that this region has played a contributing factor to the situation developing in Joshimat. Now, the point what I am trying to convey is here. In the Rishi Ganga Valley, there are more than 26 glacial lakes. Due to this presence of a natural dam, how a natural dam has been formed? This rock avalanche has blocked these streams, blocked these rivers and water is accumulating behind them and it is flowing over these rock debris. Now this water, if it reaches the glaciated lakes, it can puncture or melt the boundaries of these lakes and it can trigger a huge flooding in this area. In the Uttarakhand disaster, only one glacier lake melted. There are 26 in this region, right? In the Rishi Ganga Valley alone, right? So, it is a very volatile region, the Uttarakhand region, right? So, the second trigger mechanism was landslides or rock avalanches, which can cause the creation of natural dams and because of which reservoirs will be created which can eventually reach the glaciated lakes, the glacier lakes and it can puncture them, right? Now, the third natural trigger phenomena are earthquakes, right? So, we need to understand one thing. How are earthquakes triggered? The plates of the earth are constantly in motion and they move in a, at a different rate with respect to each other. These are the basic types of interactions. Now, when the plates move along each other, as you will see in this animation, stresses start to build up. How? Suppose the lower plate, in this instance, the heavier, denser plate is pushing against the lighter plate. What will happen? 
as this motion begins suppose this plate has moved almost 1 feet in the past 5 years but we do not find that correspondence corresponding motion in the above lying plate and this stress will eventually be released after a few years meaning thereby if these stresses are not released regularly these stresses keep piling up and if an area which has experienced such differential rate of motion over a long span of time without the release of this stress it is an impending sign that a strong earthquake can occur at any time like in the case of turkey and syria recently huge stresses built up over the past few years and because of normal faults and strike strip uh, strike slip faults at the arabian and the anatolian plate boundary this pent up energy was released at once now why am i discussing this in the case of a glacial lake outburst because because the central himalayan region has experienced a built up of stress in the past few decades how the indian plate is moving in a general northward and eastward fashion it moves almost around 47 mm per year this plate is moving against the eurasian plate we have not experienced a differential rate a corresponding differential rate of motion from the other side meaning thereby this stress is constantly building up in this area the last major earthquake occurred almost 100 years ago right minor earthquakes have been experienced in this area meaning thereby a lot of stress has already been developed in this area particularly in the uttarakhand region and a major earthquake is expected any time now what do we what do we call as a major earthquake more than 7.8 7.9 it will trigger huge landslides they will they can puncture these glacial lakes so that is why earthquakes are signaling an impending doom this built up stress adds as the third natural factor that can trigger a breach of such glaciated lakes right so this is another natural factor but the thing remains beyond these natural factors we have certain man made factors as well which can trigger the breach of such glaciated lakes like i discussed in the water wars videos china has been constructed dams in this region this is the tibetan region which has one of the maximum glaciers in the world now when you build huge dams basically you are generating reservoirs of water these reservoirs of water will eventually lead to melting of more ice why you are storing water over ice if they reach the glaciated lakes they will melt the boundaries it can lead to further flooding when the capacities of these dams will be breached china can simply release this water all at once and it will cause immense flooding in this area right so not only the natural factors but these man made factors can also lead to flooding because of glaciated melt waters right nevertheless india has published detailed guidelines how to manage glacial lake outburst floods way back in october 2020 but in the chamoli disaster of 7th february 2021 that ronthi gadhera rock avalanche 1.7 km height what happened after a report was conducted after the report was submitted in april 2022 based upon that ronthi gadhera incident it was mentioned in the report that we failed to incorporate these guidelines because of which we faced severe damage in that region and we are facing repercussions in joshimat that is one of the contributing factors right now besides these these are the immediate concerns that we face with respect to glacial lake outbursts now this topic remains incomplete unless and until we discuss the long term imp- uh, the long term implications of this melting glacial waters right so in order to understand that we must consider 
that when glaciers melt, they are adding a huge amount of fresh water in the oceans. Eventually, that water will reach the oceans. Even the polar ice caps are melting. So, these red arrows are nothing but the warm ocean currents. And the deeper channels in blue indicate the cold ocean currents. The oceanic conveyor belts in the form of ocean currents transports heat across the world and it maintains a global climatic condition. The heavier cold water which is saline it tends to sink and the lighter surface warm water is pushed by the prevailing wind systems right. So let us understand this once. Now this blue water signifies the cold polar water right. When water freezes ice contains pure water and the salts are left behind. So the area near the poles contains very thick saline water and it is heavier and it sinks. Now it adds to the first major force needed to drive these ocean currents, this ocean conveyor belt and this process is known as downwelling. The surface warm water is pushed by the prevailing wind systems and eventually both of these forces drive the ocean conveyor belt. Now this process is known as upwelling when the cold water will be pushed. Why is it being pushed? Because the surface warm water is being pushed by the prevailing wind system and this dense saline water is pushing the cold water to lower levels although it is denser as well. So these two factors contribute to the driving of the oceanic conveyor belt. This is upwelling of cold water, downwelling. So the thing is at the poles due to melting glaciers a huge amount of fresh water is being added. If fresh water is added in this area, the density of this water will reduce. Why? The same amount of salt is now being contained in a larger amount of water. When the density of this area will fall, this push factor, this downwelling will reduce because of which the entire, the major thrust of the oceanic conveyor belt will stop and it will have huge repercussions upon global climate. This distribution of water will cease and we will see temperature extremes and it can lead to severe outcomes. Although it will take a hundred, hundreds of years, but the thing is this process has already begun. So this was all that you need to know regarding the melting glaciers and you are aware about what are the natural effects, the natural outcomes in the short term and the long term. So stay tuned for further information and further news on this. Thank you.